Students, Mr. Baker back again. This is the third and last example on how to divide algebraic fractions. Okay, before we get to this third example, I just want you to look for two minutes over here, and I want to show you a little concept that's going to be used in this problem. You see this x minus 2 binomial, and over here you see 2 minus x, which is reverse, which is the reverse binomial of x minus 2. The x and the 2 switch places, and there's a negative in front. Okay, I just want you to notice that these two are equal, and I'm going to show you why they're equal, because when you distribute the negative, you get negative 2 plus x. And then when you switch this around, put the plus x first, which is just x, and minus 2, isn't this the same as the x minus 2? So the idea here is when you have a binomial, you could write a negative and then reverse the binomial, and it's exactly the same. Okay, now you'll see in a minute how that idea comes up in this problem. We're going to solve this third problem doing exactly what we did on the others. We're going to copy everything, rewrite it, and we're going to factor. So take out a 2. We got x minus y. Oops, that's a trinomial, so we're going to factor it as a trinomial. Okay, 2 and 1, the last sign is a plus, so they've got to be the same, and you've got to get negative 3, so that'll be negative 2 and negative 1. Change this to times, and don't forget to do the reciprocal of the second fraction. The x minus 2 on the bottom goes on top, and the y minus x on top goes on the bottom. Okay, now we're going to cross-cancel, just like we did before. Okay, now you see the reverse binomials here? If you look closely, x minus y and y minus x are reversed. So we want to make this one look like that. And to do that, we're going to cross it out, put a negative parentheses, and reverse the y minus x to x minus y. Okay, these are the same because of what I explained over here. So now that these are the same, you could cancel them out. Okay, and then on the other side over here, there's an x minus 2 and an x minus 2, and they cancel out. Notice this leaves you with a 1, okay? So now we're going to make sure that we make a circle on what's left so we don't miss it. So as you re look on the top across, there's a 2 and there's a 1. So that's it. You're going to multiply 2 times 1, and that'll give you 2 on the top. Uh, let me use the black marker. Okay, so now we get a 2 on the top, okay, and on the bottom we're going to circle what's left. There's an x minus 1. There's also a negative, which can be thought of as negative 1, okay, and that negative has to be included in the problem. So we're going to put the x minus 1 down. I could put the negative on the bottom, but I always put the negative in the middle, and I would recommend that. I'm going to show you why. Okay, we're actually done. This is a good answer. Negative 2 over x minus 1. You could also put the negative on the bottom, but you've got to be careful with that. If I just go like this, I actually have the wrong answer. And why? That's because you're taking a negative of a binomial, and you would have to put the binomial in parentheses. Okay, a lot of people forget to do that, and that's what would make it wrong. So that's why I recommend just putting the negative in the middle, and you don't have to worry about that. You'll have it right. Okay, that's it for the third example. Take care, and I hope you can do well on this homework.